Peter Yalens founded Yalens Estate with the vision of producing the best wines in the world sustainably. Now five years into his journey, Yalens Estate has been recognised globally as the producer of the world's best Sauvignon Blanc and the most sustainable, medium-sized organisation globally. World-class wine that doesn't cost the earth. Proud to bring you this edition of New Zealand's favourite heartland garden show, Garden Rambles. down here. Jamie, the person that recommended you said to me, he's a water storage guru. He's got solutions coming out from every pore of his body. Real <laughs> guru in this um, aspect of uh, looking after people's fresh water supplies? Well, it's, uh, it's what I do. I certainly know it well and uh, am well versed in the myriad of uh, different situations that people find themselves in when it comes to collecting and storing water yeah. for sure. And this is a very interesting little one or standard to you, is it? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. A wee spring, a wee pump, pumping 40 metres up to the top of the hill and into the house. Not a, a reliable scheme by any means, is it? Oh, well, I wouldn't call it unreliable. It's a, it's a system we see the nation over. Um, lots of people operate off springs. Uh, the one that we have here today is, I wouldn't call it big, and we can see at this drier end of the season, we can see the inflow is very marginal. So I suppose there's some exposure in this situation. And I suppose too, in some springs, when you've got a number of houses along a road, you're going to have competition on, on them. Absolutely. So what do you recommend for somebody who wants to have total security in water? What should they be doing? Mm, all right. Well, I mean, there's lots of alternatives and, and I guess you've got to fully understand what the person wants to achieve because there's just getting water to a house to making sure you can shower and have a cup of tea and whatever that may be. In this case, we're talking 40 metres up a hill. Um, or somebody may want to protect themselves against an emergency event to make sure that they had water available if there was no main power or main town supply, if they were on town supply, for a month or longer, potentially. Um, so you can build in a few different contingencies around the problem. In this situation, they want security of supply over their little spring, just in case it was to dry up. Plus, they've got lots of opportunity up at the houses and the shedding up here to collect vast amounts of water and make use of it. And that's an important thing, isn't it? A roof is a collecting device. Absolutely. For sun, water or whatever. Anything that a person should be looking at in terms of their roof before they say, we're going to collect our drinking water off here. Well, I mean, it probably makes good common sense to make sure that your gutters are clean and, uh, and all that sort of stuff. But at the end of the day, there's lots of different devices that can be put into play to mitigate the infiltration of any sort of bad stuff. It makes good sense to give it all a good clean up beforehand. But um, we're going to talk about some of the devices along the way through this journey that will help us with the cleanliness of that water. So first up, a storage device. And how do you go about gauging what sort of tank or device that you need? Yeah, I mean, that's the million dollar question. I mean, when that's probably the number one question we get asked on the phone. And I think the first, uh, you can get technical, you can get the calculator out and work out how much water they're going to consume and how mm. much they need and how long they'd want to be bulletproof over an emergency event or whatever. Mm. But at the end of the day, what's your budget and how much room have you got? Because at the end of the day, you could never catch it all. You could have 20 big tanks lined up and at some point during the winter, you're still going to be overflowing. So can you build a family of tanks or, or as you said, you've got lots of tanks, you start off with one small system and keep building so that you've got security supply, firefighting water, if you're starting to get nervous for that sort of thing as well. Absolutely. I mean, you could suggest it's infinitely expandable. I mean, um, plastic tanks, our ones come with two outlets moulded in right from the factory. So generally you're going to use one 
to get water out, and one will have a bung in it. Now at some other point you can put another tank right alongside that and you can marry the two together with that other outlet and so on. Yeah. Here we're in a very rural situation mm. and so on and so that, that security supply putting in a tank as, makes very, very good sense. But what about in town? Because we've had a season where all sorts of restrictions have been put on. Are there tanks that will fit into little sections and Give, um, yeah. Good security? No, there certainly is. Over the last few years, you've seen the development of uh, quite a few companies making what are generically kind of referred to as slimline tanks. So, tanks that take up less footprint and may be run in parallel along the south side of a property or uh, um, dotted around the place, depending on the situation. Now, for many of us people with grey hair, we think of tanks as being big concrete devices <laughs> and that newfangled plastic not to be trusted. What is the aspect of perhaps getting in, you're a plastic company, of, of a plastic tank? Well, I think, um, you know, it was 30 odd years ago that we pioneered the plastic, the large volume plastic water tank. Small ones have been around for a little while. And that was, it was a bit like Japanese cars used to be. People wouldn't be seen in that Jap crap. Yeah. And so we had to battle with that. Now the reality is that 30 years on, we can tell you that we believe they're going to last 40 plus years. We still don't know because mm -hmm. none have failed from old age. Yeah. Yet we replace concrete tanks every day. Mm -hmm. So especially in seismic situations, mm -hmm. a concrete tank is going to fail. Plastic is much more bulletproof, much easier to install, cheaper, lots of bonuses there. Right. Now, fresh water is one of those things which is a major political thing right around the world. Some say the next world war will be fought over fresh water supplies. <laughs> In towns, do you think councils are doing enough to encourage the harvesting and the collecting of water? Oh, look, I think that's a bit of a million dollar question, that one. The, uh, the short answer is probably no. We see councils spending a huge amount of money on infrastructure and ways of coping with pressure on, on water supply. Um, and in my way of thinking, there's probably a simpler one in getting more rainwater tanks into the urban situation. So. I think they could push that harder. They, they're probably going to make enemies in doing so because not everyone wants to be bullied into it. I think that there's a lot of scope to see people take their own initiative and start looking after their own patch. But have a potential perhaps for councils to assemble an approved kit that can be installed and maybe a rates rebate or something for people that put in. Are, are they sort of solutions that could be applied? They've been applied in various forms around the country and they've had very limited take up. There's not enough consumer level understanding of the, the deeper implications mm. of water supply. They know that every year the sign goes up in the main street that says stop using your sprinkler and, and that sort of stuff. But I don't think everyone has a, a really firm grasp of the issue surrounding water. And so education the answer? I think so. I think it's it's time and, and education. We've mm. seen that this, the system applied in all sorts of ways, whether it be drink driving or, or whatever. It takes time and reinforcing the message, and we'll get there, we'll get there. Yeah. And tanks, nice and attractive, different colours and things that we can put in. So that Absolutely. Fit Huge in with, range of colours. Yep. Fit in with and that. it should be fun in this application because we're sort of surrounded and we're in a very lush environment, so I reckon we'll get a pretty good colour match here and uh, the people on the receiving end should be very impressed. Yeah. Well, water storage, water politics, call it what you want, but we need it, we need it to drink, we need it for our gardens, and if you're one of those people that have suffered this summer and your garden is withering away, maybe you need to talk to someone like Jamie. Jamie, we've got a solution for this property up top, have you? I think so, I think we've got it covered. I reckon we'll get this nailed up good and proper. Let's go and have a look. All right. Probably 50 years span of pressure <laughs> tanks here, you reckon? Those that have fallen before us. Interesting. Yeah. And yeah, Davis is in here. Yes, that, a wee pump house that's going to need some work, but imagine carting one of these into place. Yeah, I think it's fair to say they didn't have a helicopter drop it in for them. And so what we are talking probably, it would be at least 30 metres, wouldn't it, up yes. to the house? Exactly. Perhaps 40 by the time it's climbed away to the house. Mm, yeah. So it takes a good strong 
old bulldozer pump to yeah. be able to do that. Yes. And do you find lots of Davies pumps when you oh, move around? Very popular, very popular pump. Mm. Well, we better keep on the move because <laughs> otherwise one of us will be wanting to cut this in half to make a um, some sort of barbecue. <laughs> Sounds good. Realise the full potential of your soil with liquid good. The combination of humic and fulvic acids promotes healthy and natural soils, resulting in healthier and more nutritious food. Applications of liquid good makes nutrients in the soil bioavailable to your plants, so they thrive, avoiding dependence upon chemical fertilisers. It's safe and easy to use. Liquid good, micronutrients for plants.